uh, Wayne Cantlin, uh, Cantlin Farms, where uh, myself, my brother Mark, my son Scott, and we'll run a, a couple part-time help. Uh, as you can see here, we're uh, stri stripping with the condition, so spring conditioning with the soil warrior. Um, we uh, farm corn, soybeans, wheat, and white beans or navy beans, as you you may some people may know them as. Um, our standard rotation is uh, corn, corn, followed by no-till soybeans, followed by uh, cul cultivated edible beans, and followed by wheat. Uh, we've been strip tilling for probably upwards of 15 years. Um, pr previous to this year and last fall, um, with with uh, a competitor's strip unit. Um, what caused us to look at soil warrior was we were, we were looking to uh, handle higher levels of residue. As you can see here, we're, we're in a wheat stubble field and uh, do, doing the, the wheat stubble in the, in the fall and doing strips of their previous unit was just an exercise in frustration because of, of plugging problems and that. And uh, the, the soil warrior has cured that. It, it's pretty much un, unpluggable. Um, so our, our, our program last fall was we, uh, in the wheat stubble and also some soybean ground, we, we uh, banded P and, P and K. Probably 60% of it in the zone. We, we had our unit set up that we also had a line free fall on, on top of the ground in between. More, more or less to uh, spread our fertility around that, that we didn't have it all locked in one place and see some stripping in future crops because we have had that happen to us in the past. So um, <clears throat> we're uh, probably running six and a half to a little over seven mile an hour with uh, 8420 on uh, 16 row spring conditioning. We're using about half a gallon, probably no more than that, a, a fuel an acre on, on the spring trip, and, and it was about a gallon and an acre in the fall. In the fall, we were running the eight, eight row wide with the deep the deep fall tillage cog. Um, we went, uh, you know, initially we went to strip tillage, and, and what we're doing now, we're, you know, for instance, this year we're, we'll have about 2,000 acres of strips down with this machine for corn and uh, one tractor's doing that, one pass over in the spring. So manpower wise and fuel, fuel wise, uh, it's pretty efficient compared to the, the equipment being cultivators and tractors and, and such that we'd need to keep ahead of a uh, planter in a, in a conventional scenario. Um, we're, we're also thinking or hoping that we're getting better better placement, better utilization of fertilizer and, uh, and efficiencies of targeting what, what we're using and where. Um, on this program, we've eliminated uh, the tarragator pass that, that would usually have gone over uh, either spring or fall, put, putting uh, the additional amounts of P and K on and, uh, and broad, broadcasting it, um, much more targeted this way. The, the soil cog is a little, the added benefit on this, we think, is, is uh, you know, maybe additional depth depth that uh, we're getting with it. And, and we were actually surprised last fall with uh, the shattering effect we were getting. When you reach down into the soft zone, it wasn't only underneath the zone. If you shoved your hand sideways, you, you could feel that it had been fractured in, in a in a nice, nice wide zone, and and you know, like we're we're probably so deep. Um, we had one instance where we stopped at the end, and we were out walking around the unit, and we actually had a a band of soil this wide suspended between two 30-inch cogs, which uh, was the ama amazing and just the the effect that uh, was was going on there. This in the spring, we do, we were doing. P and K in the fall, and the spring we're applying our, our uh, nitrogen as a urea form on, on uh, 
it's uh, mostly in the bin, but we're spilling a little bit, a little bit outside that too. Uh, next year, we anticipate ha having the dual placement system and, and playing fine tuning that a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess, I guess it'll continue to evolve, but we, we certainly feel we're headed in the right, right direction. Uh, this is pro probably what, one of our, our first stops at a bolt, bolt come loose, and that, I guess some of that is uh, catching, catching it in time. Uh, mach machines very, very well built, lot, very, very much heavier than our, our previous machine, and, and uh, we, f we feel pretty confident that uh, the longevity is, go is going to be very, very good on, the, on this machine. Uh, Lots, lots of adjustments, but not a lot of adjustments that we need to do. Once, once we were kind of set and and going and getting what we wanted uh, to start the season, we we really haven't played with it too much. You know, you know, uh, being able to change the the air pressure from the cab, you know, you're you're kind of watching the depth control wheels, and and as long as they're keeping contact with the ground, that's uh, setting your depth and and. Uh, no issues that way. There's been any bad things. We, we, I don't I really don't have any, anything but good things to say about uh, Mark and the guys at Environmental Tillage Systems. Uh, they've been very helpful. Uh, we, you know, we phone a number of times with questions and 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 uh, always get get answers and uh, have had had the backup uh, that that we would hope to have and and. Uh, you know that it's constantly evolving and and trying. Every everyone's trying to uh, better the system and and uh, make things work work properly.